Reef. Hey, bud. How you doing? Hey, everyone. I'm down here at Tawasson Beach with my boy Reef. I wanted to make this video for a while and I finally found some time. I'm going to go over some etiquette and some regulations of spearfishing in and around uh, British Columbia. So if you're interested in that, uh, learning more about the sport, uh, stick around, stay tuned, and I'll try to lay some things out for you. All right, so the first thing that you should do is learn about the fish that you plan on harvesting. Uh, I've been with a few people and I've taken them out. They're pretty new to the sport. They shoot a fish and come up to the surface and ask what it is. Uh, it's not a good idea. You got plenty of time to research the species that you're allowed to harvest, find out the habitat they live in. It will make finding fish a lot more easy and it's the responsible thing to do. Uh, generally, ling cod, green ling, and rockfish is what we harvest, so spend some time learning about that species and what they look like, and that'll make harvesting easier for you and make you a more responsible spearfisher. Once you learn about the species of fish you can harvest, uh, you gotta find out the area you plan on harvesting in. Uh, area 17, for example, would be around Nanaimo. Uh, you would also have to find the sub area that you plan on harvesting and refer to the limits uh, to, to find out the amount of fish that you plan on bringing home. In each area, you're gonna find rockfish conservation areas. Uh, no fishing is permitted inside those areas for any given species. Hand harvesting is okay, but no hook and line fishing, no spear fishing, uh, uh, no fish uh, retention. Uh, there is also dive restricted areas. Ogden Point is a good example. It's a little unfair, but you're allowed to hook and line at Ogden Point, uh, but spear fishing or hand harvesting of any sort is not permitted. Uh, so find the area, find the sub area you want to harvest and ensure you avoid those dive restricted areas and the rockfish conservation areas. Once you have all that figured out, uh, you have to refer to the species that you're allowed to harvest and you have to refer to the limits. Uh, you have daily limits and you have possession limits. Uh, for area 17, the daily limit is one for rockfish. I'm just giving an example. So I should only take one rockfish that specific day. Uh, the following day, if I was visiting, let's say Nanaimo, I can have one rockfish one day and one rockfish the next day. My possession limit is gonna be two for rockfish, meaning I shouldn't have any more than two rockfish on me at any time when I'm outside of my ordinary residence. So if I was visiting Nanaimo, I was there for three days and I shot two rockfish over those three days, I can only bring two home. Uh, I would not be allowed to bring three home with me because I've exceeded my possession limit. Now, if I was there on a three day trip, I shot one rockfish one day, one the second day, that equals my possession limit. But if I was to eat a rockfish, that would open up one more for me to bring home. If I was there three days and I shot three rockfish, that would be acceptable so long as I don't have any more than two at any given time. If I was to eat one, on the second day that would open up another rockfish on the third day uh, hopefully that makes sense in area 20 the limits are a bit more generous uh, rockfish possession is is six so i can shoot three one day three the second day and i can bring uh i can bring uh, six home with me if i was there on a three-day trip i can shoot three one day three the second day but if i don't eat any that's it for my trip i can bring six home and from there, you have to refer to the species and the method that's acceptable to catch them. Uh, rockfish, greenling, and lingcod, you can spearfish. Uh, salmon, it would be illegal to spearfish uh, in, in British Columbia. You can't identify salmon species underwater. It's quite difficult to do so. Uh, plus, with coho, they have the hatchery coho and the wild coho. Uh, wild coho, often, you're not permitted to catch. Uh, and it would be hard to identify a hatchery underwater if it was of a salmon species. Uh, they cut off one of their fins to identify them as a hatchery. So doing that while underwater, a few seconds you see a fish shoot it, yeah, not possible. So uh, uh, spearfishing salmon is not permitted. Uh, lingcod and rockfish, you can spearfish. You again would have to refer to the catching method to see what's allowed and what's not. To harvest crab, uh, that one, you can hand harvest crab. You can catch them in a trap. Uh, for us being free divers and spear fishers, we catch them by hand. Uh, to measure crab, you do have to have a crab caliber. 
a tape measure is not good enough you do need a caliber uh, dungeness have to be six and a half inches and uh, red rock crab have to be four and a half inches uh, so bring a caliber with you measure your crab when you take crab home crab home they have to remain in their shell in case you get pulled over by DFO they want to identify the crab make sure it's a male and make sure it's of the proper size uh, the limit for crab in most regions is four I believe when you go further up Vancouver Island the limits are a bit more generous I forgot my phone on me so I can't confirm that but regardless it's your responsibility to check those limits and ensure you do not exceed them Puget Sound King crab there is a daily limit of one a possession limit of two Puget Sound King crabs uh, they have to be male as well they have no information on the DFO website to identify a male versus a female I did make a YouTube video to help out with that one uh, but be responsible when it comes to harvesting Puget Sound King crab I'll talk about that more later in the video the regulations can be daunting and a little tricky to figure out I spent a lot of time researching them and I'm still learning mistakes that I've been making I hope the DFO can improve on that and hopefully work towards a solution that will help everybody out in the long run. I personally think there should be some sort of mandatory training uh, just to say it's the fisher's responsibility to know the regulations. I don't think it's good enough when their regulations are quite difficult to interpret. Uh, so send DFO an email, ask them if they can create some sort of a video uh, that, that work, uh, fishers can reference. Now they do have the BC Sport Fishing Guide. You can download that PDF file on their website. I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, if you're new to harvesting, I really, really highly suggest reading that reading that little uh, 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 guide. Uh, it makes things very easy and can explain things in a bit more detail uh, than I'm gonna go through. The limits are in place for a reason. Uh, please stick to them. Do yourself a favor, do me a favor, do every harvester in the lower mainland a favor. If the limit is one, don't go shoot three or four, it's irresponsible. I'd really like my, my daughter to get into the, to the sport one day. I hope her children do too. Uh, so yeah, in order to ensure a sustainable harvest, we all have to play by the rules. Uh, so please stick to your limits. If a crab's a half inch under, don't take it. If a ling cod is small, you know it's too small, don't shoot it. You know, just be responsible, please. Harvesting shellfish, uh, that one's a bit confusing as well. Uh, go to the DFO website, go to shellfish uh, section. Uh, right at the top, it will outline sanitary closures and areas where harvesting is permitted. Uh, you got to keep an eye out for the sanitary closure areas, areas with a uh, heavy industrial activity or where there's uh, sewage discharge and uh, treatment centers. Uh, you don't want to eat that stuff. You can get really sick. Um, Maybe not immediately, but a lot of those chemicals from industrial activity absorb in your body and can re result in uh, some sort of a disease or illness down the road. So for your own safety, make sure you check those uh, areas. At the top of the shellfish section on the DFO website, they're gonna outline uh, what species are currently open. Once you find out the open species, you would have to refer to the species column uh, to see your limits, what your limits are. Uh, check daily because those closures change daily. There's also algae blooms like red tide. You can uh, have paralactic shellfish poisoning. Uh, research that illness. It doesn't sound fun. It is life-threatening. Uh, so check those limits daily if you plan on harvesting. For the fish that we harvest, you don't have to worry too much about size restrictions. Rockfish don't have them. Greenling don't have them. Uh, link cod, they have to measure at least 65 centimeters. Uh, that's roughly two two feet, a little bit over two feet. Uh, what I do on my spear gun is mark 65 centimeters, and when I'm underwater, I reference that mark with the fish that I want to shoot. Um, it can be difficult to assess a fish's size underwater. Do your best. Uh, adult link cods will have more of a rounded face. Uh, the juvenile link cod have a pointy face. Uh, mistakes happen, but please do your best to shoot the right size fish. You want to give those chance of fish to mature and produce some offspring before we take them out of the ecosystem. So 65 centimeters um, is the size restriction. For rockfish, greenling doesn't apply, but I try to look for at least a medium to larger size fish if I, if I do shoot it. 
Okay, so I'm also going to chat about some of the etiquette associated with this sport. Um, I don't want to come off as condescending and I'm not trying to please anything. I'm just sharing some discussions that I've had with fellow divers. Uh, the sport's growing, so we want to ensure everybody's on the right path and following the, the same rules. Uh, you guys can take or leave some of this stuff, but it is better for everyone if, uh, if some etiquette is, is followed. The first uh, topic, uh, probably the most important one, is about about locations. I am seeing a lot of people asking, hey, where's this spot? Or, hey, where in Eucalypt can I shoot fish? Uh, people don't like that question being asked, because uh, if you post a location, you're going to have a lot of people swarm in those spots, and it won't take long before there's no fish left. Uh, so rather than asking people, hey, where's this spot? If you're new to the sport, ask people to take you out diving. Uh, it's a way to meet people, it's a way to connect with people, and it's a way to keep everyone on the same page. Uh, so asking for locations and posting locations on the internet is a good way to, way to bust a spot. The other one I'm guilty of, uh, I've been called out on it, and, and I understand why. It's uh, uh, posting video or pictures with obvious landmarks. Uh, again, I've done that in the past and I apologize to everyone for that, uh, but it isn't smart. I'm making a strong effort to not give away any locations anymore. Uh, if you guys have a wicked video or a wicked clip, uh, try not to put obvious landmarks in the background. It won't take long before people figure out where those spots are. So use some discretion when it comes to tagging locations and posting video and pictures. I, I try to get out. I try to dive different spots all the time. Uh, areas that you would never expect to see fish. I try to hit them up because you never really know what you're going to see. Uh, the ocean is big. There's a lot of places to find fish. And some of my favorite dives have been in spots that I didn't expect to see anything. I dove in Point Roberts. I found an old pocket watch from the 1800s. I dove the uh, Tawasson Breakwater. And I found a Ling Cod hotspot. Ling Cod and Rockfish is closed in the lower mainland, but it's still wicked to dive with those creatures and see them exploring and seeing their habitat. So uh, get out there, dive everywhere. Like uh, Daniel Mann says, that YouTuber, uh, he's correct, right? Dive everywhere because you know ne you never never know what you're gonna see out there. Um, I I personally try to limit my crew size when I go out. It's not always possible, but. In terms of safety, you know, trying to keep an eye on 15 people in the water can be a challenge. Things get a bit relaxed and people start looking out for each other. Plus 15 spearfishers with loaded guns in close proximity, it's probably not the safest option. Uh, also bringing 15 plus people to one location, you're putting a lot of pressure on that spot. If everyone's taking home their limits, you know, it won't take long before there's no fish left. Uh, so do what you want, uh, make your own decision on this one, but I don't know, limiting crew size to one location on one trip isn't a bad idea. And with that one, uh, spread yourselves out. Uh, I live in Tuas and yet I'm going all over Vancouver Island. If I'm doing it, I know someone from Nanaimo and Victoria can do it. Uh, spread yourselves out, you find a spot with amazing amounts of fish, that's great. But if you keep hitting that same spot, again, the populations will dwindle. Uh, so hit the road, do some road trips, get out there, explore. The adventure is honestly half, if not more than half of the fun in the first place. So yeah, get out, explore new zones, new areas, do some boat dives if you, if you have that option available. But try not to hit the exact same spot every single time. Uh, that's my two cents. I love spearing a big link cod. I think everyone does. Um, when I go diving though, I'm not specifically targeting the biggest fish I can see. If I see a ling cod, it's of illegal size, I'm going to shoot it. I'm not going to bypass that one and look for like a 40 or 50 pounder, right? If I saw one, I would take it, I'm not going to lie. Uh, those big female ling cods are the ones that populate the reef. They lay a lot of eggs. I know anglers, you know, people out there jigging for ling cod. If they catch a big one, they'll release it because they want more ling cod in the future at that same spot. So if you see a big one, I'm not saying don't shoot it because I would, but if I saw a legal size one, I'm not going to bypass that so I can shoot a bigger one. I don't know if you catch my drift, but yeah, I don't think that's a bad idea either. Uh, try to let those larger fish, if possible, you know, populate, populate the reef. Lane cod and rockfish are closed in the lower mainland. 
the populations were decimated back in the 60s and they have, have been still struggling. So don't intentionally target ling cod or rockfish in Vancouver. They're closed. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Other areas, rockfish and ling cod are only open certain months of the year. Uh, generally, rockfish and ling cod close in the end of September. Uh, Area 20 in Northern Ireland closes November 15th. So always check the uh, open season, make sure that it's still still uh, possible to target those species. Ling cod and rockfish produce eggs in the winter months, uh, so you want to ensure that they're populating the reef as well. Female ling cod come up from the depths in the winter time and mate with the males. The males, once the eggs are laid, uh, they guard the nests. So you don't want to be shooting any ling cod in the winter months. Uh, or else the eggs will get eaten as the male won't be there to protect those egg masses. So uh, be responsible, check the limits, check when the season is open and adhere to the rules. Okay, and one more, one more thing I want to discuss is some of the regulations with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. I feel like things are a little one-sided towards anglers. Uh, they don't seem to really look at spearfishing as much of a sport. And it's definitely growing in popularity, so I think it's time they do so. I've sent TFO a few emails and they often fail to respond to them. I feel like if people did it in the masses, they'd be more inclined to listen. So I'm going to go over a few opinions of mine. You guys can agree with them, disagree with them. If you do agree with them, do me a favor and send DFO an email and try to try to get them on the same page as us. If you look up perch, uh, the daily limit for perch is 8, the possession limit for perch is 16. Uh, however, they do not allow us to go and spearfish them, which makes no logical sense. The fish is easily identifiable, there's plenty of them, it's the most abundant fish I see when I'm out there diving, uh, yet technically we can't spear them. I talked to a friend of mine who chatted with a conservation officer and he was told it's an oversight. I emailed DFO to confirm that and they never responded. Uh, I'm not itching to go out there and spear perch but if the option was available that would be great because I know many people do like to eat them. Uh, same with cabazon, you know, uh, scalping. Uh, scalping the daily limit is 8, the possession limit is 16. Uh, yet we can't go out there and technically spear scalping. Uh, so I think that's a little unfair. If it's open for hook and line fishing, I think it should be open for spear fishing. Minus salmon, I can, I can understand that one. And the other thing about scalping is uh, there's many different species. I think there's uh, 27, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the limit for scalping is eight. You're allowed to take eight home. Uh, there's a difference between taking eight bullhead, your staghorn scalping, and eight cabazon. I think taking eight cabazon home would be a little irresponsible. In the states, in Washington, the limit for, for cab is only, only one. So I think the DFO should be segregating cabazon from the other species of scalping and put a limit of maybe one or two on there. Uh, to take eight home is just not a good idea. Um, I'm surprised that they haven't done that already. And with Puget Sound King Crab, the populations are unknown. Uh, they have a long life expectancy, but their life expectancy is also unknown. Uh, we are allowed to take one home, possession limit of two. Uh, there's no annual limit. Uh, with Lingcod in a lot of regions, the annual limit is 10. Uh, I think they should also have an annual limit on Puget Sound King Crab. Uh, the number I put on myself, I said was eight. Some people think that's too generous. Uh, people think maybe four would be a better idea. But currently, there is no limit at all. If I lived in Victoria, I could technically go out 365 days of the year and take a Puget home with me. Uh, that is not a good plan. So uh, email the DFO, ask them A, on their website to identify the, the differences between male and female, considering female are prohibited to harvest, and also try to introduce a, a annual limit. Uh, send them an email on that one. Uh, I think that, that that should be in place. In many countries, you're only allowed to spearfish while breath hold uh, diving. Uh, to go out there and spearfish while scuba diving, 
I know people might hate on me for this one, but it's like taking candy from a baby. Half the time I see fish, it's at the end of my breath hold. I dive down again to try to find it and the fish is gone. So it's a challenge, it's not easy. That challenge kind of disappears when you're breathing from a bottle underwater. The fish that we harvest aren't really hard to shoot in the first place, so it's just one more unfair advantage. I think that the regulations should prohibit scuba spearfishing. I don't think that's a very, very ethical way to harvest your fish. That's my opinion. This one too might be a little controversial, but you know, areas like Victoria and Nanaimo, the, the, there's gonna be a lot of, lot of spear fishers uh, uh, joining the market, uh, jumping on board. If everyone in those areas keeps hitting the exact same spot, those fish are gonna be gone. The, the ecosystem is gonna be thrown out of whack. Um, these shore dives in particular, they get a lot of pressure. So in areas with high populations, it wouldn't be a bad idea to enforce spear pull only regions. So go there without a loaded gun, but a spear pull. I find spear pulls a bit more of a challenge. You can get efficient with them, especially with the fish that we harvest. Uh, but having a spear gun does make it a bit easier. Um, so the DFO, I think they should have spear pull only regions uh, implemented. Um, again, that's going to be controversial. Not everyone's going to agree with me on that. I don't expect everyone to, but yeah, I think that would be a, a good plan, especially with the popularity of the sport increasing. So with salmon, I already went over why you're not allowed to harvest them, which I do understand. Uh, you can't identify the species underwater. The funny thing is, when you're hook and lining salmon, you also can identify the species. A lot of people that catch maybe five or six salmon, they weren't the right species, they were too small. They take them out of the water, they take a bunch of pictures with them, and then they throw them back in the water. Uh, when you do hook and line a, a salmon, you're not supposed to take it out of the water if it's not a legal fish. You release the hook in the water, and then you let that fish swim away unharmed. People don't do that. They probably kill about 15 fish just to try to catch one, you know, which which is which is a little ironic because we can go underwater, we see a salmon, we shoot it, we get to th take that salmon home, that one fish. If it was the wrong species, that's a drag, but at least we didn't kill 15 in the process of catching that one. Um, so I don't know, be a tricky thing to enforce and regulate, but I think they should open up salmon fishing for spear fishers not in the river that's like shooting fish in a barrel literally but in the ocean if we did see a salmon it would be nice if we could harvest it i'd like to eat a bit more salmon but uh yeah that one's a bit tricky and probably also controversial if you guys have been following the ocean locally here you probably heard of the starfish way syndrome the starfish way syndrome killed off the sea stars and sun stars the sea stars have made a comeback, the sun stars have not. The sun stars eat sea urchin, uh, sea urchin eat the kelp beds. Without the sun stars, the urchin are decimating all these kelp beds and destroying the habitat for many fish. The purple urchin in particular seem to be the problem. I've dove in some areas and you can't even see the bottom of the reef because it's all covered in purple urchins. Purple urchins, if they do not eat, they go dormant and they slowly starve to death over a five year period. During that period, the roe in the urchin is inedible. It shrivels up into nothing. So these sea urchin out there, they're dying a slow, painful death of starvation. The limits are 12, uh, possession limit of 24. I think the DFO should allow free divers and scuba divers to go out there and call urchins in certain areas where attention is needed. They've done that in Haida Gwaii and they've had some success. Uh, kelp beds growing back. Uh, winter months in particular where the harvesting closes, I love to bring groups of people out to reefs just to smash up purple urchin. Uh, I love every creature in the sea, it doesn't matter the creature, uh, but the ecosystem is really out of whack due to human activity. So it'd be nice if we could go out there and, uh, and uh, make a difference. Um, there's literally millions upon millions of them. Us going out there smashing up urchin probably won't do that much in the first place, but in my opinion, it's, it's better than nothing. So ask EFO, send them an email, uh, ask them if we can go out there and smash up urchin. 
Uh, I was chatting with someone for a bit, but they stopped returning my emails. Go figure. Uh, so yeah, do me a favor on that one. Send them an email if you agree with me. You know, to operate a vehicle, you need a license. Uh, you don't just buy your license. You have to get trained to operate a vehicle, and there's some sort of a road test and knowledge test. I'm not sure why there isn't something in place for fishing. Not just spear fishing, but, but angling as well. Uh, the, the rules are for the license holder to know the regulations. I don't think that's good enough. I think there should be some sort of mandatory training involved. So it'd be nice if the Department of Fisheries and Oceans could come up with a little course. Could be an online course. Put in your, in your, in your information. Take the online presentation. And then you get a card at the end saying you're certified to harvest in combination with the license that you obtain. So some sort of a training course would, would be ideal and it would help a lot of ignorance out there in the fishing community. All right, and that's pretty much it. Uh, just some points I wanted to touch on and get some information out there. And uh, feel free to comment on this video, uh, add up your own two cents, your own suggestions and uh, other topics that you think would be worth discussing. Uh, again, I'm not trying to police the sport. Um, half this stuff uh, that I'm discussing, I've chatted with a bunch of other divers and they're on the same page as me. Uh, I just love the ocean. I love this sport, spearfishing and free diving. And I wanna make sure everyone's playing by the same rules so uh, we're all responsible out there and we don't tarnish the reputation of brothold harvesting. Yeah, peace and love everyone. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something and got a bit of insight and I uh, can see where I'm coming from. Uh, one one last note, uh, when you guys are diving and you're finished up, try to grab some garbage off the beach or uh, maybe periodically do a beach walk and pick up some trash. I see way too much garbage when I'm out there diving. Even here right now, I'm looking at garbage washed up from the ocean, it's quite depressing. Uh, the ocean gives me a lot. I like to give back and clean up garbage periodically. So get out there, do the odd beach cleanup and uh, be more fish for everyone. All right.